Okay, let's unpack this. We're doing a deep dive today into what looks like a pretty significant shift in the biotech world. We're specifically looking at programs aiming to tackle chronic hepatitis B, uh, HBV, and also HIV. Yeah, it's quite an interesting development. The source material we have, this news article, it details a transaction where control is changing hands for some, well, potentially groundbreaking therapeutic vaccine candidates. And the companies involved are big names, Gilead Sciences and Hookipa Pharma. Exactly, two major players. Right, so our mission today is pretty straightforward. Let's walk through this article, figure out the key details of the deal itself, what it might signal for these specific HBV and HIV programs. And, you know, what it means for Gilead and Hukipa respectively, and maybe even the wider landscape for treating these diseases. Absolutely. It's always fascinating to try and understand the why behind these moves, the investments, the collaborations, sometimes pulling back or like here, consolidating. Mm, the strategic thinking. So let's jump right in. The core news, according to the article, comes from a May 22nd filing. And the big takeaway is Gillian taking complete sole ownership of spe specific arenavirus immunotherapy programs. Programs they were developing with Hukipa, yeah. And these are laser focused on chronic hepatitis B and HIV. Correct, those two targets. And the price for Gilead to get this full control, the article mentions a total payment of $10 million. $10 million. Now, the source highlights two specific candidates at the heart of this deal. There's HB400 for hepatitis B. Okay. And HB500 for HIV. And they're described as a renoviral therapeutic vaccine. Right, which sounds different from the typical antiviral drug, especially for HIV that most people might know. What exactly is an arenaviral therapeutic vaccine? Okay, so think of it like this. Instead of a drug that, say, suppresses the virus daily, a therapeutic vaccine tries to train your own immune system. Trained you to do what? To recognize the virus uh, and control it long term. The tech here uses modified arena viruses specifically. Lymphocytic, choriomeningitis virus, and Pasheen virus are mentioned. Basically harmless versions used as a kind of delivery vehicle. Yeah. They're engineered to carry little pieces of the HPV or HIV virus antigens into your body. Ah, to pr provoke an immune response. Exactly. A strong targeted immune response against the actual virus. So leveraging the body's own defenses. Got it. Makes sense. So where are these candidates right now? What's their status, according to the article? Well, for HB400, the HBV one, the article notes a phase 1A1B trial kicked off back in 2023. So that's underway. Okay. And HB500 for HIV. For HB500, an early stage trial was ongoing. But here's a really key part of this new deal. Gilead has decided to actually wind down that study. Wind it down, not just take it over. Right. They're not continuing it themselves as part of taking ownership. They're stopping it. Hmm. That definitely stands out. I think the source mentioned that trial was aiming for about 30 people, and clinicaltrials.gov apparently had it pegged to finish around November this year, 2025. Yeah, that's the context. So stopping a trial that's already enrolling, especially when you're paying to take full ownership, hmm. it, uh, it certainly makes you ask questions. Questions about the strategy, for sure. Why continue the HPV one but halt the HIV one? It is a divergence in approach, isn't it? Pursuing HB400 for HBV, stopping HB500 for HIV. Now, this Gilead Hookipa link, it's not brand new, is it? The article suggests they have a history. Oh yeah, absolutely. It goes back quite a way to 2018. That's when they first signed a licensing agreement. Right. And it was focused on Hookipa's arena viral tech, specifically for HBV and HIV targets right from the start. And I remember reading there was a bit of a twist. In 2021, Gilead kind of stepped back from the HIV side of things. That's right, yeah. At that point, Gilead actually opted out of moving forward an HIV immunotherapy candidate that came out of that initial work. They decided not to take it into clinical trials then. But then? They change their minds. The source uses the phrase second thoughts, leading to a new pact in 2022. Exactly. They re-engaged. That 2022 agreement was pretty significant. Gilead paid $15 million up front, okay. made a $5 million equity investment in Hukipa, and that deal laid out potential future payments too, like a $10 million fee for program completion. Which sounds maybe related to this new $10 million figure. It could well be, yeah, structure-wise. Plus that 2022 pact had big potential milestone payments up to $162.5 million tied to development progress and another $65 million possibly linked to commercial sales. Right, the classic bio bucks dependent on success down the line. Standard stuff in these R&D deals, yeah structures payments around hitting key goals. So this latest $10 million for getting sole ownership, it builds on that earlier framework. Mm -hmm. And how is this $10 million actually being paid out? 
The article breaks it down. $3 million is due pretty much immediately when the deal closes. Okay. And the remaining $7 million gets paid out over a three-stage transfer plan. So it's a hokey puff fully hands over the programs. Got it. Stage transfer, stage payment. Now, to really get the context here, we have yeah. to look at Gillian's position in these markets, right? HIV especially. Yeah. They're, well, they're dominant? Oh, unquestionably. Huh. A real powerhouse. The source flags their huge success reported $19.6 billion in HIV sales just last year. Wow. Anchored by massive drugs like Bictarvi, Discovy, and they've got Lenacapavir, their long-acting option, recently approved for pre-IP, for pre-exposure prophylaxis, and rolling out now. So they lead the market with existing antiviral treatments. But as the article notes, they haven't actually brought an HIV therapeutic vaccine to market yet. That's a key distinction. And this deal involved acquiring one, HP500, mm -hmm. which they then decided to halt the trial for. Given their massive success with the antivirals, what might that signal? Well, it really raises an interesting question about their internal view, doesn't it? With market-leading drugs and new long-acting options coming, oh, yeah. perhaps the early data on HV500, while maybe promising enough for the 2022 pact, just didn't um, stack up against their other priorities or maybe the existing treatment strategies in HIV when they looked closer. Therapeutic vaccines are a fundamentally different approach. Right, aiming for that functional cure maybe, but it's a different beast entirely. Exactly. High potential reward, but also unique challenges, unique risks compared to optimizing antivirals. Mm. Deciding to wind down a phase one trial, it suggests they saw perhaps a clearer path forward with their other HIV assets. That makes sense. It could be a strategic calculation based on their existing strengths and pipeline. What about HPV then? Gilead's in that market too. They are, yes. They market Vemlody for chronic HPV, but the HPV landscape, it's tough. Developing what they call functional cures, clearing the virus so treatment might be stopped, that's proven really, really difficult. Yeah, I've heard that. And the article mentions recent setbacks for others trying, like Vera Biotechnology and GSK pulling back from some HPV programs. It just highlights how challenging that goal is. So in that context, even with Vemlody, Adding a therapeutic vaccine candidate like HB400, mm -hmm. the one they were continuing, that could make a lot of strategic sense. Precisely. It gives them another shot on goal, you know, a, a different approach in a field where breakthroughs for cures are badly needed, even if it's high risk. And turning to Hukipa, mm -hmm. the article frames this deal as a welcome show of faith for them. Mm. What does that suggest about Hukipa's recent situation? It implies that they've maybe faced some recent struggles. The source points to a couple of things. A planned merger with Pool Big Pharma got called off back in February. Okay. And they also had layoffs recently after Roche ended a different collaboration. That was on a cancer program, HB700, totally separate from HBV, HIV. So this deal, even though it means transferring these assets, brings in some needed cash, and is kind of a positive signal for Hukiba amidst those other challenges. Yeah, it's a definite boost. It really shows you how dynamic these biotech partnerships are. They start, they evolve, sometimes they end, sometimes they reshape, all driven by data, strategy, market conditions. Mm. So wrapping up the core event, Gilead is consolidating control, taking full ownership of these specific HPV and HIV therapeutic vaccine programs that started with Hukipa. It's a snapshot, really, of the constant movement and decision-making in the tough world of developing new treatments. So thinking about this specific deal, the $10 million, the decision to halt one trial while continuing another, what does that tell you, the listener, about the realities, the, uh, the complex choices and maybe the risks involved in trying to develop drugs for diseases like HPV and HIV? And here's maybe a final thought to chew on, stemming directly from that context in the source material. We talked about Gilead's massive success in HIV, driven by their antiviral drugs. We write billions in sales. Now, in this deal, they take full ownership of the HB500 therapeutic vaccine candidate and immediately decide to wind down its phase one trial. Yeah. So what questions does that specific choice prioritizing maybe the existing drug types while halting this early stage trial for a different kind of approach, the vaccine approach, what questions does that raise for you about the different strategies, the different bets, maybe the trade-offs involved in a long fight against HIV? It's a fascinating strategic puzzle.